for NEPA and also for the Black Lives Matters movement also to address and abolish um, police violence and brutality and unlawful, unjust murders of Black people. Um, and also, it's just a great time to uh, have a conversation with the mayor, especially concerning um, uh, the POC community, marginalized spaces, um, just all the folks that are overlooked. And I think it's really cool that we get a chance to speak with the mayor. Um, and yeah, I'm happy that she was like so on board to do this. And so I'm excited to see some real change happen. And I'm excited that I have this opportunity opportunity to bring all of us together on Instagram Live um, to have this like virtual town hall with the Black Scranton Project and the mayor because there is so much going on right now and I think it's really important that we hold our elected officials accountable for the things that we need to protect us and to make sure that we are safe and to make sure that we have all the resources and access to everything that we need to like make our city the best it can be. Um, and Scranton, as we know, has so much potential and I think, yeah, that it's time that we have our voices heard and that especially us young people, which is, you know, most of us who are here now watching on Instagram Live, like really start jumping into local politics and really start making the city work for us. And so I hope that this conversation that we are getting ready to have will inspire you to do that and also participate in, you know, the upcoming elections. Keep an idea and keep an eye out on, um, yeah, just things that are happening in our city and, you know, just just the turmoil and the tensions and the actions that are taking place right now in the country, this is another way that we can participate in the conversation. This is a form of protest. This is a form of action. This is a form of demonstration. And this is showing that we see, we're paying attention, and we're going to hold their feet to the fire until real action and real change happens. So I'm so happy that you guys are all here. Um, I'm going to try to uh, answer all of your questions. I'm going to try to make sure that things get addressed. Oh, thank you all to everybody who submitted questions to the Google form. They have been really, really great questions. Um, and it's very, very helpful because, you, you know, like we have to remember, it is the mayor. We can't really waste our, you know, her time. We can't, can't be on here just like, you know, acting, acting crazy, right? I wanted to let her know that we're really about it. We're serious. We have real questions. So we have have about 28 questions that was submitted so thank you guys so much for taking the time and really putting up thoughtful questions um, because she she's seeing them I made sure that the questions were anonymous because you know just because I think it's more important that the question is addressed and I don't want people to feel like you know all eyes are on them so I made sure that that was the case so the questions um, for with pages she's gonna see she can't see who actually uh, said which question but the questions are available for her to view but I'll be asking her the questions in person and we'll just have a regular conversation dialogue I will try and interact with um, the folks here if you have a question and we have time to get it please put it in the questions box so we can get to it um, uh, she's Paige Cognetti and her assistant so it might be a couple extra minutes for her to get here, but you know, don't worry. We'll get a conversation going. And uh, it should only be about mm, an hour's time. So hopefully you guys can stick around and hang out with us because I am super excited for her to, you know, jump on here and get here. So hello everybody, I see you. Thank you. Thank you all for joining. This is super cool. I'm like legit excited. This is so cool. And also shout out to the black scranton project also i'm just so happy like that you guys are have been supporting us and understanding that like we're really trying to like make real change um today is a, a tele telethon for um it's called nepa gives and thank you to all the people who donated i didn't even promote this um and shout out to the and the fact that you know black folks don't have opportunities and don't have resources and don't have funding to do things. Um, um, Laura Duchesi, I'm hoping I'm saying her name right. She's the CEO of the Scranton Area Foundation. She was like, I want you guys to get involved in this. And because we've been so busy just trying to keep up with like, like the national conversation and make real political change here in our city, I wasn't able to promote that the way that I wanted to. But we've already had over 
for 60 donations and we've already surpassed our goal of $2,500. So thank you guys so much for doing that because that amount will be matched by bigger sponsors that are watching um, the telethon donation thing happen. So I appreciate you guys so, so much. We're on our way to getting this cultural center. And we have some other things that are um, popping up that we want to talk about too that we'll share with you soon on how we can celebrate black people and black life in the midst of all of this intense, the intense things that are happening right now. You know, it's not new to us. We all want to find ways to stay connected and get involved. And this is, like I said, this is our protest. This is our, we're all coming together as a collective right, right now to talk to the mayor. This is our virtual sign of doing things why I and the Black Screenson Project just felt like it's still kind of risky to just be out there in the streets and like, like who's really going to hear us downtown? But look who's hearing us now in the internet. We're home safe. The mayor. We have her right in our face right now. So I appreciate you guys, you know, for coming on here. And um, uh, yes, to Poison.Thorn, we will save this recording. I'll put it in the IGTV tab so it'll be archived forever. I will save it and I'll put it on Facebook also because because we're not going live over there. But yeah, I'll keep this and make sure that it's available for us in the future and for anyone who wants to watch it. Um, pulling up, hey fam, I see you. Shout out to Molly, shout out to Midnight Mirage. Ooh, shout out to Electric City, Bro or Electric City Roasting Co. Oh my God, I love you guys. I wish I had my coffee right here because I just finished my cup. Um, I had the, it's an old one. I, I picked it up from Wegmans on um, the Tiamo. It was really good because I didn't have it over, you know, the Valentine's Day season, but I had it now, so it's okay. And it was on discount and it was still really good. Hey, mom, I see you in the building. I see you. Hey, everybody. Thank you guys for coming in. Um, I think uh, the mayor's not going to pull up for another five minutes. So, in the meantime, so that way I can at least address some questions that were given to us by Instagram, I'm going to look at some of the questions that you guys already have put into the little box here i'm gonna get to them and see what uh oopsie <laughs> that's my room y'all sorry uh how do i flip this back and see what we got um and i'm just gonna wait for wait oh i'm like where's my phone i'm using it to be on instagram live i'm i'm silly but i'm trying to look out for messages and know when um if i don't see See her pull up in the uh if i don't see her pull up on ig live i'm just making sure i don't miss any messages from mayor page cognitive because you know i just want to anyway so let's look at these um let's look at these questions that y'all put in here and see what we got okay this is a good one what can the white population of scranton do Allyship means a lot of things. Using your dollar to help promote um, black businesses, local and national and international. Like anything that you need at this point, see if you can get it from a black business. And also We Buy Black is a very good resource um, for all black businesses around the United States. Um, now thinking about it, I should put a link to that on our website, which is also something we're doing. We're updating our website now so if anyone has trouble getting it we're like literally today is the day that we are transitioning um servers so hopefully that's fine so okay anyway so back to the question um how can the white population be allies so you can be allies by using your dollar to support black and brown businesses you can also any violence put yourself in the in front of that violence especially when it comes with police brutality I I have seen videos of, of white people literally standing in front of a black person and nothing happens. They don't even touch them. So if you are really about it, you're not even afraid of the risk. You'll put yourself out there for us. So that's what we really need you to do. If, like I, like, like I said to Chris Kelly in the news, like if you're at home and you're just up in your room, you, you know, fighting, uh, fighting racial crime on the internet, but you come downstairs and your dad is talking about, you know, N word this and we're that send them back to africa send the mexicans back to mexico none of that tell them now nah. why do you feel like that this is this is not okay this is not great this is we, we are not with that so those are some things that you can do um 
to be allies. Like really show up. Not crossing the street when you see a black person. That's also something you could do to be an ally to show that you're not afraid of us. Like like you see us, that you care for us, like we you love us. Like if you can't even see us as human beings, then what's the point? Like what's the point of being an ally if you don't even see us as being people? So also what you can do is read. Um find different sources, look up um, you know, watch some some documentaries, thirteenth is a really good one to start with by Ava DuVernay. Um, take some time to try and ed educate yourself first. Um, I also kind of like, don't don't lean on your black friends for all the answers. They, they don't owe you any explanations. They don't owe you to educate yourself and, you know, learn about the black experience in all ways that you can. I'm not saying don't ask people for help because Everyone should ask for help if they need it. But yeah, try and take initiatives and some steps. Like, you know, start looking up some books that are helpful. The New Jim Crow is also another good book to start with, especially about I keep showing you guys my bedroom, but that's okay. How do we put this question down? All right. So she's getting on here. Um, yeah, we have, like I said, a lot of really great questions. Um, so I'm excited to jump in. I am excited to jump in. Katie Collins is the real deal. I don't know who Katie Collins is. I hope this is going okay. I don't really know my my phone got a little froze. Are we still <laughs> flipping my phone camera? I know. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, okay, let me try and request her in again. Let's see. Add. I know I'm not good at the Instagram live. I'm like low key a grandma. I'm not good with you know. Just trying to do that we can. Hey, man, how are you? Right. Hello, hello. Good so to have good. you. Good to be here. My, she is amazing, the Megan bomb. Sambo. She drove over in her car with her phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw her text message. I'm like, it's all good. I'll just, you know. Talk to the people too. So. There's always there's always something. This is our first Instagram live, which is very cool. But there's just always something, always every time. And this is my first time sharing an Instagram live with somebody. So we're just you know we're we're learning. We're going. I love it. I like it. Together. Yes, I'm excited too. This is this is super cool. So um, I don't know if Megan showed you some of the questions that we got, but. Didn't, we had so much happening today with the opening up and the sidewalks and I haven't had a chance, but I'm excited to answer all the questions I can and all of the answers I don't have. Um, as you know, I'm not going to tell you something I don't know, but we'll definitely take it back and try to work on it. Yeah. And I appreciate you for doing that too, because for those, I mean, most of the people watching live in Scranton, so we know, you know, about the previous administrations and what they don't do. So, you know, we appreciate the transparency and trying your best. Um, is there anything that you want to say to the people before I start bombarding you with questions? Yeah, definitely. So wanted to say that uh, I'm just, I'm so just honored to be here. I wanted, I don't know if you already said, we, you and I already had this planned. And then it happened that, that now we're, we're speaking and there's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful protest rally going on downtown right now. Um, everybody, most everybody's wearing masks, which good. is just another really, really feel good that people are respecting each other by wearing those mm -hmm. masks. When I see the pictures, people are distancing. So I'm so glad that we're having that experience down there. And there's another rally, I think, planned for next Saturday, yeah. which is um, which is exciting. And I know our, our chief of police, Chief Graziano, met with that organization the organizers today so i think that will be another successful um successful in that people will feel comfortable 
comfortable. People will, I think, wear masks and, and respect each other in terms of the, the public health pieces. And then we'll be able to have people speak their minds, but it's not just about speaking their minds, speaking your minds. It's about us listening. And I, as a, a person, a person that, that is a for food on the table or, or anything in, in that I, economically I've had privilege in my life, I, I know that as a, is that to truly listen, understand uh, as best that I can. I can never live your experience. I can never know what it's like to be a person of color but i can listen i can learn and then we can act and i can i can push i can push change because i'm uh here as the mayor and it's a, an honor to be in this seat but it's an obligation and uh, none like none i i've ever i could have never dreamed i'd be in a position like this i'm so honored to be here but it means that we got a lot of work to do so i'm ready yeah. so hit me with the and questions I'm, and we'll do what we can <laughs> we're gonna do what we can and also you started your um give you props and um, yeah like just for the so that people will know like you and I had a conversation and like before you got elected and I really said to you like I really hope that we can do some work together and like really yeah. make some real changes for the city and actually like hope that you listen to like the wants and the needs of people of color and marginalized communities so I just want to thank you again for that because you know it feels like forever ago but also not that long ago at the same I know, time so. I know yeah, like, so it's cool that, like, we were able to really, like, team up in different ways and, like, make some real change in the city. So I appreciate you for that a lot. Because... Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate you. We couldn't, I couldn't do that without you. And every, everyone, you guys should, should hype for all over the state and the country. It's just amazing. We have so much history here. We need to continue to find ways that we can learn that history. Um, we need to get it into our schools so that people understand that local history as well. And um, we, could, we can go on and on about that. Uh, but I, I really, I will say one thing, just we're on Instagram Live. It's fine. So when I was, I grew up in Oregon and there's a lot of, uh, you learn so much history about the different Native American tribes out mm -hmm. in Oregon. And when I moved to Pennsylvania, I, I saw there's a real lack of, of a, kind of awareness, acknowledgement of the indigenous people that lived exactly. on the land before. So, I'm coming from Oregon, coming from a place where all of our field trips and things like that, we were often going to places to learn about the Native Americans from the Northwest of the country. There's lots of museums. And as a kid, you do that. I don't really see anything about that, that here. And so that's yeah, another that's that. piece of what we're trying to do, right? There's, there's so much history that we need to acknowledge. And then we also need to celebrate. So we need to find ways that we can do that right here in Scranton. And I'm excited, excited that we have the conversation avenue yeah we say the word all the time saying we like say the word all the time the indigenous folks but we completely just you know colonize them but right. we'll have that conversation on another day <laughs> yeah but um so yeah we have some really cool questions some really nice responses so i want to start out with more of just like a message from someone who put there they said to mayor cognetti and glennis i really Really applaud your efforts for making yourself more accessible to the community in these online town hall style meetings. This allows Lackawanna County to engage more in local concerns, have their voice heard. I think you both made possible to have open constructive discussion on race, social economics in our city. And so that was really nice, and I wanted to share that. Great. Great. Thank you. Yes. Awesome. Um, and someone else. Okay. A few other people also said, like, thank you both for what you, for what we do. So thank you guys um, for taking the time to even say that to us because yeah. we appreciate it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I appreciate any, that's just something I say to a lot of times when I go to speak to high school kids and college kids and especially young, young people, like write to people that you are in either in a position of authority or that you admire some if, in a career that you want right to them because people don't get that many outreaches you'd think but you know yeah. aside from maybe you know president obama like you, you get fewer people reaching out to you than you think so you know reach out reach out to me reach out to glennis like i know this format this is great yeah me too i, I think these are really cool 
um, someone says, real talk, why is the mayor only, why is the mayor only following eight people on Instagram? Like, how am I supposed to engage with someone who clearly doesn't want to better connect with residents and businesses? This is why 18 to 25 crowd isn't showing up to vote. Um, you need to join us in spaces we feel comfortable in and, and they are online. Why, why our Instagram, why the mayor Instagram account doesn't follow? Yeah, I guess they want to know why you're not following more people. Um, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, we can. So we've used it um, these first five months. We've used it as a, a way to like push out information into. Um, I mean that we're not looking at things, but we can certainly um, ramp that up. And I know we're not not on Snapchat uh, or WhatsApp, but we can look at, we can, <laughs> we can try. I don't know if it'll work, um, but is it Instagram, this is a question for me too. So like, is if it, we're on Instagram now, is that something that people like to, like a medium that they like? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we can, we Go can, I'm, I'm wondering, I don't know if there's a way to put the town halls on Instagram also. Um, we do them on Facebook because the, the, um, it's just the, the way, because I'm going to continue to do the ha town halls every Friday, mm -hmm. that we can see how we can link it to Instagram too, or at least put it on there or put a link on there. I don't know. I'm yeah. sure. And I, you know, none of, none of these platforms are perfect. Facebook's not a perfect company um, by any stretch of the imagination, but we got to, got to use what works, but that's, that's yeah. a good point. Yeah. Well, I'll respond to that question, too. I mean, you have to look at a lot of things. I know that now because I have to look at a lot of things. Um, but yeah, I think maybe if you just do like even short little Instagram lives or just like a mini version of the town halls that you do, um, mm -hmm. because like, like this person said, a lot of young folks are on Instagram. Instagram is my flat favorite platform of choice. Um, yeah. But I also use Facebook because it does have other shareable platforms that Instagram doesn't yet have to offer but um yeah I don't know maybe if you have someone who can run your Instagram social media just post a little bit more or, you know the young okay. folks the, yeah. the teenagers and the kids in high school they're they're on here a lot so I just wanted to put that yeah. at the top no, um, that's a good point it's definitely a good point um I myself I, I am not on social media much uh but I do know that Facebook's like definitely not the young person's tool so um yeah we should up our instagram usage for sure cool uh there's so many questions i'm trying to i try to categorize them <laughs> good, that's good. so we can kind of like move from topic to topic um sure. so this is kind of in the same vein of our like opening conversation and what we were saying before but someone also says um scranton serves as an example for surrounding much smaller towns more equitable and there's a couple of questions like that that's um do you want to ask another couple of questions in that same kind of in that same vein yeah let me go let's see uh so uh scranton yeah i said that one scranton serves uh do, 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 do. uh let's see it keeps flipping back okay can we see all the um yeah. So I can't, the Google Doc is spazzing right now, so. Okay, no worries. So yeah, I can talk about that. I, it's true and it's it's a good thing, I, I think, and I hope that Scranton really is kind of the, in the lead of this region and, and what, we, what we put together as a city really sets the example, hopefully for some of the other townships and boroughs. And I under, I, I know that and I hope that we, uh, I hope that we can be a, like a, a positive influence in the whole area in that way. Uh, as I've been in the role, I think, five months exactly today with everything that's been happening and how, how we can help the surrounding areas. I will say that we have, I've connected with other mayors, um, Pittston Mayor and I talk a lot, the Wilkes-Barre Mayor and I talk a lot, Hazleton Mayor and I talk a lot. Um, up here in NEPA, um, the you know we talked with the legislators, the county commissioners. Today, I was on the phone with 
Congressman Cartwright and Senator Blake that we talk all the time. Mm -hmm. And that communication, like really setting up that communication is so important. And we're, we're getting there. I know that in all of this uh, COVID craziness, uh, people from other boroughs, townships, other counties are calling us in my parks department or my public works department and asking how, what are we doing? So we are leaders and I have a great team at the city. I, I do remind them, you know, we are, we set the tone, the language we matter use, the language we use matters. The um, services that we provide matters. The way we treat uh, our constituents matters. So we're trying to really, really like raise the bar and keep the bar really high and make it not just Scranton, but, but this whole area a place that people want to live, people feel safe living feel good about living um, and then we want to make it, it easier to do business here so more we can have more entrepreneurs we can have more small business doing better we really are always open to, to ideas or if you are watching this and you don't live in Scranton or you have a relative or friend that lives outside of Scranton and you have ideas for how we could better engage we're open to that too cool cool um, and another question similar to the topic topic of um, being equitable, uh, someone asked, how do you hold city government accountable for the value they place on black lives, especially the law department, police department, office of economic development and human resources? So that kind of ties along with. Yeah. Yeah. So with the police department, we sent, uh, we sent out and we can go through it a little bit we have uh, bias based trainings in the police department so all officers go through a bias bias based training every up on those trainings but i'm sure i'm sure we could continue to find others and, and do better um, i would say with the police department and throughout government we need more people of color in our city um, we are our, our city employment doesn't and reflect adequately reflect our city so mm -hmm. we have a long way to go on that i <laughs> i have uh had it kind of started an initiative in february where we were reaching out uh, to some of our communities of color asking for, for resumes saying you know we, we're gonna we had to furlough 43 employees so i've gone um gone down um <laughs> 43 uh instead of gone up so we're gonna challenge there but recruiting uh people of color to our city is really important uh, robert mcleod who, who is a teacher at northeastern intermediate uh mm -hmm. he and i have worked together since i was on the school board it's not just you know it's, it's teachers we need teachers of color we need officers we need firefighters we need people in the cabinet um i am very excited our new hr director is uh amber viola she's a woman of color Great. she's a veteran mm -hmm. she is That's such a addition to the team so I would guess I would say one reason one, one mechanism for us to always be thinking that at the forefront is now our HR director um, our human resources leader is uh, is a woman of color and she's you know now she's a cabinet official at the city of Scranton so I know. I it's was a like, good start shout out to you Amber I see you out here girl get yeah. as you you published yesterday with Chief Graziano one mm -hmm. I really think Thank you for that. Also, I read it over where we um, are trying to post it on our website, but we're like in the midst of switching our website server. So I don't know if it's up right now to talk to my board and see if they got it up. But for those who don't know, um, Mayor Paige Cognetti and also Police Chief um, Carl Graziano put together a statement to address hashtag eight can wait in the campaign zero campaign and how we are participating in that and making actual change. So I appreciate that because it was pretty, it was more detailed than I expected it to be, which is a good thing. Um, yeah. And I know that um, one point that was actually very well detailed was um, the police department and what they're doing with the body cams and how they use the body cams yeah. and what are, um, and like what they, like how often they use them and just like that whole situation. So if you want to know more of that in the city website too. Um, yeah. So that's, the that there um i can just real quick i can just to add on to that yep. so the police department has been wearing all officers have been wearing body cams for two years 
So it's it's something it's it's that the the PD has been doing for a long time. And there's actually a, a pilot with some of our officers right now for an additional sensor that uh, enables the body. There's a lot of there's a lot of different sensors that enable things automatically, but we have another one. Um, but it, let me just read it so you know, because this is like pretty far along in terms of the tech technology. So it's um, the sensor is installed in the officer's holster, where every time he or she removes a firearm um, from the holster, it activates their body worn camera. So I do also want to say though that all of these things. Are, are, are good things and body-worn cameras are great. I do want to get to a point where we don't have to worry about any officers having holsters or guns in them. That is ideally where we get in our whole country. Um, I, I lived in Japan in those mm -hmm. cities. That is where we need to get. We have a long way to get there um, because we also have you know people who hunt. I have family members, a lot of my family members who they hunt. My you know brother owns a gun. He also lives right next to Glacier Park and he shoots animals sometimes and that's that's okay but you know we had a long way to go in our country but we, we right. want to get there we want to start that course and, mm -hmm. and figure that out so I just for everybody out there when I we talk about holsters and guns and things I I don't want it there's more to it than that when I talk about it and I I realize what I'm saying I understand what I'm saying should me Means that there are we have police officers with guns, and what these use of force policies are. <laughs> the next phase is that demilitarization of the police, and in getting getting to where we have um, just culturally, we have a very different way that we police our people in the United States. Right, right, and like you mentioned too, uh, gun culture is a big thing in Scranton and NPA, like that hunting and just collecting guns and all that. Uh, yeah. it, year two and people aren't necessarily going to give up their guns yeah and you don't need to, and that's the thing like you want to use your gun to go hunt like i'm that's that's cool i'm fine with that like a deer rifle is one thing then we get to you know handguns in people's cars that's a whole nother thing so right it's a long way to go long way to go i will say too that i you know i was guns away and like i always i was like look at my watch i'm like well he had eight years and he didn't do it. So, right. So, I, you know, we, 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 I don't think anybody's going to take, uh, take the, the hunting guns away from people, but we do, we do have to figure it out, you know? Right. Right. And just eliminate gun violence. But right. on the topic of the SPD and, um, what they're doing to, uh, eliminate police brutality, police violence, and all of those things. Someone asked a really interesting, a uh, really educated question. So whoever this is, that was cool. Um, so they say, after looking at the 2020 operating budget, I saw police spending cost the city $25 million a year with only 50,000 granted for training and certification and 50,000, a $10,000 decrease from 2019 is a lot. While the gun ammunition budget was increased from $35,000 to forty-five point five thousand dollars. What message does this send to a city and community that's continuously struggling with education and financial stability? What justification does this spending have with a budget that barely breaks five hundred thousand dollars to support economic and community development? What will you do to improve community resources and decrease inflated? Uh, I. You know, first would say that you know we really do have a great police chief. We have a very good police department that has, like you said, really good policies in place, and they have a lot of training in place. But I know we can do better. This is I didn't. This wasn't my budget. This is the budget that um, of the previous administration. We need to look at this budget, and we need to look at our, our entire budget. I am never going to overpromise because that is not fair to anyone. So I can't promise right now that we will de decrease the, 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 the police department spending. We'll certainly look at that. But, but I do very much commit to doing everything we can to increase the community development pieces. Um, we have a new uh, economic development director. She's tremendous. Uh, we still have a, a great community development director as well. Um, so really, we're trying to figure out how we get more funding there. 
and we are always going to be in my, well, not love to see, it's, it's what we're hoping to do. I want an office of neighborhood engagement. Uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania has one. Their mayor down there, Mayor Sirachi, is so cool. She's my, she's my, like, dream mayor. I just, like, <laughs> she's, been, she's been in for two years, and she's just, like, done so many cool things, like, try to offer we try to answer all these questions throughout and you know being on instagram like maybe we need to follow more people but you know i hope we've been getting some stuff out um we try to answer every single question that comes across but if we could have a neighborhood engagement office some people that are like really dedicated to more of that proactive outreach right now it's you know when i say my team it's it's really like three of us four of us <laughs> trying to do it all and they yeah. also have other a lot of other a lot right. of other that, that they that they do so if we could get some dedicated things i want to ramp up our outreach we have been doing a lot with the census and we'll continue to do a lot with voter you know really pushing for voter registration and pushing for um ballot access that, that um to increase in our budget and the person that i hired for economic development comes from the state she knows where a lot of those funds are at the state and federal level that we should be getting so we'll be applying to augment that budget in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Do we have any plans um, or proposed plans to decrease uh, police spending um, and police budgets? That was a question that came up like two mm -hmm. or three times and stated different ways. Um, and also with you know Campaign Zero, we're trying to decrease police spending, police budgets um, because police violence. Right. So. I'm cert so certainly we'll we'll look at that and want to learn more about campaign zero and that from a budgetary perspective and from looking at what we have in place and looking at the, the we have to also remember that there's a contract there's a police union contract just like there's mm -hmm. a contract there's we I have to be really careful in saying I'm going to I'm going to decrease the police budget that that's that's more than I can promise but I can promise to look at it and we could try we can try to to figure that out I, I realize and I really appreciate the question that I see that it is so imbalanced that um that, that that's there now I also want to say that within that police budget is so looking looking at things like 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 ammunition that I that something to to look at certainly but you have to realize like those body worn cameras we want those are really expensive so a lot of that yeah. spending is for the 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 good mm -hmm. progressive policing a lot of that spending is health care is pensions it is uh you know the the employees um not only the employees now but the employees we've had in the past so buying uniforms for police but it's not to just diminish the bizarre inequity of how we fund our schools versus how we fund our police departments. So it's definitely something that we need to look at. And um, I honestly, I think this, I'm glad that this is happening now. We have a budget we'll start to put together over the summer. And this is a great, great impetus for us to be really thoughtful about that. Mm -hmm. um, so this is my question after reading the um, statement that you would um, yeah. please put out. So the last Last um, part of the eight uh, statements, the list of addresses, was the Citizen Review Board. And it seemed like Chief Graziano was kind of like on the pessimistic side of wanting to put that together because of funding and that it would be expensive. But I say we still should have. Everybody can see what is happening um, with the city police department. Open up those lines of transparency. So I know that the budget isn't there, but even if like, like we get um, a review board that is just volunteer, voluntary right now, um, just because I really feel like I want to see more transparency with our local police department um, and know like what actually like what their protocols are in terms of how they engage with, with mm -hmm. residents and citizens. So, um, yeah, I say still I, me personally respond to this. I think that a citizen review board is important because I think the citizens should know because they are taxpayers and they should know how these police are protecting us and or not protecting us so um yeah, yeah i'm yeah. 
no, it's important that we do it right if we do it. So that's that's mm -hmm. a, a piece too is done right. They're very, very good. I'm not sure that it would be that you would be paying the members of it as much as you'd be paying the, the legal structure for it. But mm -hmm. that but that's 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 fine. I just wanna make sure if we do it, we do it right. Because the worst yeah. thing would be if we and this is what uh, actually there was some language in here that that um that i had seen and it was kind of talking about like if you just do it a lot of it, a lot of departments over time sometimes in response to something have slapped one together and said like okay here we have it and then it either has no teeth or it just doesn't have it doesn't have, have the, the funding behind it for the legal work uh, or just isn't there for transparency chief graziano is a tremendous leader and i think we can really look at this and try to get the budget for it and figure figure out what it is that that we can do to make, make it work look at those models across the this department has a policy review committee and what we could do perhaps is is put together i know this is so such government speak but it's important like maybe put together an advisory committee. they are, look great on paper but unless they're properly put together they actually can have the inverse the, the opposite uh, results than you're than you wanted to have. Yeah, well, I appreciate the clarification because I mean, clearly, I, I didn't know what goes into it. But in case anyone else felt similar after looking at it. Um, yeah, yeah. No, and that's the thing. On that. I, I'm up for us looking at, at anything. And, you know, given, given what's happening now, maybe we can find outside funding for that investigative piece and put it together. Mm -hmm um without more cost to the taxpayers right yeah um so this, this next question um has to do with ice and ice raids in the city i thought it's important because we had a conversation before when citizens and residents um yeah. so, so this question says um to my knowledge granton was a sanctuary city however this past year there were several ice raids in South Scranton, including one in which elementary school children were terrorized and threatened by ICE agents. How did these raids coincide with the city's sanctuary image? And even though Scranton was a sanctuary city, the Lackawanna County Jail on North Washington Avenue houses federal ICE detainees. The detainees aren't all criminal. And, and as we know, no, not all immigrants are of color. Can you tell me how many ICE detainees are in Lackawanna County Jail? I don't think you know that, but if you do, um, how many are are in there due to expired work visas, misdemeanor charges, federal uh, felony charges? I think you know those statistics, but I thought it was a good question in terms of, you know, ICE being in the city of Scranton. Yeah. So the. Uh... Scranton Police Department does not notify if there is an ice raid. Mm -hmm. There could be one happening right now, and Chief Graziano would not, not know, and I would not know. That is uh, disturbing, to say the least. Um, it's it's on. We don't want to be a part of those. We're, the Scranton Police is not going to be a part of an ice raid, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. We shouldn't be, but also the fact that the federal government is doing those is. Um, is not something that we get get notified of. So when those things happen, I hear about them tangentially, not not from PD because PD is not notified. Mm -hmm. When there are detainees that are taken, if, if they're taken, they're going to a federal facility. They're not going to a city facility. So I, in terms of the the federal courthouse in North Washington, I I don't have an answer for that because that's that that's run by the the federal level. So that's not a super satisfying answer, but changes at the federal level and the, those have to change so that we don't see those types of things here and I I don't like it because I feel you know we I feel helpless because we don't have jurisdiction when ice comes so mm -hmm. that's a that's a really hard thing uh, I will say we are we are not technically a sanctuary city uh, I'm glad that we have a reputation for being welcoming I want to 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 more and more be that be that city and be I know there's ways we need to definitely need to um we 
definitely, definitely need to make sure that we're more welcoming, but we are a section sanctuary city technically on the books. Um, with ICE, that's going to take federal change. And I have to say we, we probably are a few months out uh, until hopefully January 2021 from seeing changes there. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, hopefully we can get there. And uh, in the meantime, you know, we need to going to be uh, only only going after people that are harmful to our community. Yeah. Um, a couple of years ago, I went to the city hall meeting and asked uh, the city council members, like, what are we doing to protect, you know, our citizens residents from ice and the answer that i got i don't remember the specifics or what sort of policy it was exactly but what they told me was that because of some uh legislation with the current um administration um 45 there was like some plans with cities where it's like you can either opt in for to be in contact with ice so when they come it's like your local police know or you don't and because our city opted out we don't know that and because we didn't do that that allows them to circumnavigate the city being you know notified of their um their place in the city and so it's a catch-22 because it's like if you want to cooperate with ice then our our, our um our local tactic so right. um yeah it's just like complicated and then i don't know you know which option would be i don't best. i don't i don't no, I don't know either which is best, and we can look at that and see what what is the best thing. Um, yeah, I, I could I could probably argue it both ways, and I don't know. We haven't looked. We haven't revisited it uh, yet in these five months, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure what. I'm not sure what that would look like if we could even opt back in if we wanted to, but we could. Yeah. Yeah, because I was thinking about this for a long time, like, like, if we opted in, then, you know, that they don't necessarily want to, I don't know if there's like, any sort of like contractual agreements that they can settle on. But again, this is a complicated topic, but I also want to address it because that was a concern I had and I still have because I don't know if it's just a matter of there being a space for the community to rally around um, vulnerable, you know, residents when stuff happens. But like, how do we do that? I know we kind of talked about this a couple months ago on like what that would kind of look like, but it is a question that um, if anybody else watching knows knows more policy on that, um, yeah, yeah, definitely reach out to Paige or I or whoever else might be able to, you know, because it's a complicated topic. Yeah, it is. And I think, you know, my first, my, my, my gut reaction to it, and I would say kind of where I lean is I like that we're not opted in because I don't want the Scranton police officers to have to go do something in the community that they don't believe in. Mm -hmm. I don't want us to continue to build, build trust in our neighborhoods, build trust with our community, and then completely break the trust because we're, we're told that's a risky, that's a risky thing, but it also means that we don't know, uh, we don't know if they're, if, if ICE is here. So um, it's, yeah, we need more information. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Um, so let's see what we got over here in the questions. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, so I guess we can maybe switch gears a little bit because we had a couple questions on some race racism that happened amongst the University of Scranton community. I don't know if you're aware of that that has happened over the past few days. No. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background before I like give you the question, over the past couple of days, some photos have circulated with um, a current student at the University of Scranton who was um, donned in blackface and her were supposed to be advocating for black lives and, you know, cutting racism to see that happen in our community, especially the University of Scranton. And so a lot, a lot of folks were letting us know a lot of people were like blowing up the university, like putting this girl on blast. We say all that to say that they issued a, like a weak apology, the student issued an apology. And um, yeah, a lot of folks just don't want to tolerate, tolerate that. And so that question is kind of based on that. 
Um, and also uh, uh, the University of Scranton issued an apology that basically just said that African Americans and people of color are in their thoughts. They're not necessarily going to expel this girl, um, that they're kind of keeping it more internally. It just seemed like they weren't doing anything to do that's harsh but I think that's what it has to be it has to be a model of that and like if you wanted to be so egregious and so racist and like put your whole body in brown paint and like say something disgusting to you know black people and like, like during this time again I don't know exactly when the photo was taken but the fact that you know the student was going to be a lead RA and have like leadership roles on campus I think that that she should be punished for that because that's not an example that the university should uphold especially when they do have a lot of you know students from all over you know and they have this mission of being a Jesuit institution and having missions to go help other you know people of color around the world it just was it just was really um distasteful and doesn't all want to accept either yeah. so that's my point to you yeah. um kind of a brief fill in and I'll yeah. offer the question to you um, how can you get the University of Scranton to address a current student who posted an extremely racist photo and caption? How can you get them to stop cover-ups when students commit acts of sexual misconduct and racism? How, are, how can you allow a university in the city of Scranton to allow these types of things to occur um, while you are mayor? What will you do to change this and how will you continue to strive for a safer community? Yeah, so... To start with, I would say that I know it's really, really hard when these things happen, that there's bureaucracy around the responses. And I haven't seen the response, so I'm, I'm not going to comment on, on what the university's response was. Maybe it could have been stronger. In terms of expelling somebody, for example, it's not as satisfying as, as what we're looking for, but they have, I'm sure the University of Scranton has protocol they have to to go through. I'm sure they have to have certain conversations. There's, you know, certain obligations that they have. They have to cover them some sort of investigation or some sort of thing. So I don't know anything about this. I just know how it would work in say that a school district or here, uh, here at the city. We can't, we have, there's a lot of steps you have to take before you fire someone. You Usually, before you expel someone, fire someone. Now, what we saw in Minneapolis with the murder of George Floyd, we all saw that. The whole world has seen that. The fact that, that he was, they were fired immediately and they've now been charged, that, um, that's very, very clear cut. Some of these other things, there is bureaucracy and some legal things beyond it. So I know that's not satisfying. I know these things don't happen immediately, but um, that's, that's, unfortunately the the world we live in and some other long-term change that we need along with right? demilitarization of our police we also need to make our make a society where we're not just always threatened by lawsuits that's that is such a terrible way to live and having been on the school board having now now being mayor the fact that i there's so many things that's like okay well this is the right thing to do and then you have to go through a checklist of things because you know you think we're going to get sued about this or this. I'm like, good God, like, we just need to make the just have to sometimes make, make a, make a decision based on some steps. And that's not as satisfying, but um, that's, that does not sound like uh, someone that we um, want in our community. So I hope that, I hope that there's um, a solution there and I hope that solution comes soon. And in terms of the larger issue, so I'm really getting, I, I got, I've known a lot of the, the universities and colleges, uh, the leaders around, and we're really through this crisis, we've gotten even closer. So, you know, Jill Murray at Lackawanna College, um, Julie Cohen, who's at the University of Scranton, uh, Katie Leonard at Johnson, and um, sorry, uh, Sister Mary, Mary Wood, Sister, sorry, <laughs> um, Sister at, uh, Mary Wood, and then Dr. Waff at PSU, with all five of them, we're in really close touch and we haven't had that conversation yet about making sure that our policies that their policies about sexual violence sexual violence on campus um we haven't had that conversation that's probably a conversation that we 
we should have. And so we uh, should look at that um, from a citywide perspective. I think, you know, probably as the first female mayor of Scranton, again, there's a lot of stuff we haven't gotten to yet, but as the first female mayor of Scranton, that's something that I would really like to, to look at. And we could do, I think, a lot of education about um, sexual violence and make sure that we have safe uh, infrastructure going around. Like when I was in college, we, I drove this safe ride van. Like we, we probably should have some more of those types of things in our community. And mm -hmm. I'd like to explore how we could do that. Yeah. Um, would, it be a, would it be possible for you to um, recommend that our local colleges and universities um, reassess their codes of conduct and make sure that instances like this are not tolerated in some way? Because I think, think the for them to do so. So if I feel like if you were able to help us and the students that are affected by this, at least encourage them to update their codes of conduct. I mean, because you can only do but so much. But if they hear from you, like, I don't want to see our students here feel such a way. Can you tighten up your codes of conduct? If that's something when you get with Dr. Wafa and um, Dr. Um, Julie Schumacher Cohn, like the other folks from the other universities and kind of see what they can do in that network to make sure that their policies are protective of the LGBTQ community students, um, you know, students of color, disabled students, the, you know, the students that are most vulnerable on campus that will be affected the most by this. I think if we press them to make real, like their own policy change on the campus, I think that will help make sure that, you know, it doesn't happen. And like, at least we have that to at least protect us in case some other student does. And they don't feel like, well, nothing's going to happen because they, they technically can't do anything right. for it, you know? Right. So, yeah, we can absolutely have, have that conversation and, and come to the table and, and say that. And we need to, we need to increase the, the, our policies here at the city too. Um, and that's something that um, our new HR director is, is looking at. She's looking at our policies or in many cases lack there We'll be doing that at the city. We, we should definitely involve the educators in that. And I appreciate that um, that question and that point. I'm sorry that it came on the heels of what sounds like a, a really sickening situation. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was pretty rough and, you know, with everything going, going on with George Floyd and, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement really heating up right now and making sure that for the Black Scranton Project, we're involved in national conversations, but for us specifically, we don't want to ignore what's happening in our own backyard because we still, you know, we right. want to press for national. Scranton Project is only one organization, but we are also like really dedicated to protecting and making sure we stand behind our local community. And so that's what we are trying to do. So once students like started hitting us and flooding us like with pictures and screenshots, Shots of things will happen. Like the only thing we can think to do is start emailing, messaging everybody, and seeing what we can do um, for you know for some people that, that wondered why we were so pressed about this instance of blackface when you know black people are dying by police. I think that's also important. And I think the more of us focus on a bunch of different things instead of one thing, at least some change will come about it. So it was important to us because I don't want I don't want students of color let us know we'll try and send emails we'll try and make public statements we'll try and hold them accountable like it's not okay over here all right yeah. Gosh. so that's kind of why we did what we did um yeah. we didn't have all the information so we made sure that when we did reach out to the university we said that, that you know we saw some instances past present or future we want you to know that we don't think it's acceptable it's not acceptable for you as an institution so yeah if you would be able to help you know and help us influence them to tighten up their policies mm -hmm. I think that would be a good a step in the in a good direction for and all yeah and i think what's good about this is well there's nothing good about it but um when these types of things happen it's important that we don't just focus on one institution i think it's the way that we can really make change is that we don't just say oh this one organization did a bad job we say wait 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 what does everyone's policies look like what should they look like what 